Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today I'm going to show you how I work with uh, Python and Flask using the Vim editor. Um, so uh, I've mentioned many times that I have three favorite editors for working with Python and these are PyCharm, Visual Studio Code and Vim. And I did videos on PyCharm and VS Code already so the time has come for me to show you Vim. Uh, so before I begin, I, I recognize that Vim is a hard, difficult to use editor. It's an unlikely choice for a lot of people and I understand that. I do not want to uh, convince you that you should switch, you know, to switch to Vim. Uh, I just want to show you what's possible in case you're interested and would like to explore this. Uh, the reason why I like Vim is that uh, it allows me to, to, to get a, a more than decent editor uh, running on any machine. It, Vim runs pretty much anywhere and uh, when, when you log in to a remote server uh, which is based on Linux then you, you have Vim installed. So it, it's installed in, in pretty much every Linux distribution so it's, it's there ready to be used. So all I need to do is drop my config file, which, uh, by the way, I'm going to share with you. You, you can find the link uh, right below the video. Uh, so all I need to do is drop that config file in that machine, and then I get this. Uh, so it takes 10 seconds. It, it's uh, super quick uh, to install, and then I get a, a very decent uh, file editor. Uh, so this demonstration is going to be different than the ones that I did for PyCharm and uh, VS Code. Uh, with those two, uh, because those are IDEs, you try to incorporate as much uh, of your development process into the tool. Uh, with Vim, Vim, Vim is a text editor. Uh, it's pretty good, but it, it's, it's a text editor. It's not an IDE. So, for example, I showed you how to run uh, the application from PyCharm or VS Code, how to run your tests, I'm not going to do any of that here because uh, it, it doesn't really make sense. This is a very good text editor, so I'm going to show you how I edit code with it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by showing you a, uh, a quick demo of how uh, this setup works. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how you can set it up yourself. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, to take my config file and set up Vim with, uh, with, with my configuration. And then uh, if, if you're interested, then you, you, you will be able to, uh, to start from there and uh, configure it uh, more to your liking. So on to the demo. Uh, you can see that uh, there are three sections uh, that I have. I have a, uh, a file, uh, file browser. Uh, the center is where you edit files, so, so you have a file. And then on the right side, you have this uh, this thing called the tag bar, which uh, basically shows the structure of your file. And it allows you uh, to uh, to click on anything that you find interesting and, and then jump to that part of the file. So for example, I can uh, double click the, uh, the this function and then it takes me there in the code. Um, the mouse works. Uh, so this is this is a text window. There, there's nothing magical. It, it's a normal uh, text uh, text terminal, uh, but you can use the mouse. Uh, Vim supports uh, mouse clicks, and uh, it also supports the uh, the scroll wheel. So uh, the integration is actually quite nice. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's open a file. I'm going to open. And once again, I'm going to do it with the mouse. Just double click. Uh, so this is uh, my models file. Uh, you can see that this is uh, quite more, uh, a bit more interesting. So it shows me all the classes. They're sorted uh, alphabetically. So for example, if I wanted to go, let's say I want to see set password on the user model, it takes me there. So pretty nice. And uh, another thing that I can show you, let's say I'm going to just introduce, uh, I'm going to just type some text. 
Uh, so the first thing is that uh, there is a, uh, a bit of a integration with Git. So the code shows me the uh, status for each line. So, so you can see which lines were uh, added or modified. And it also shows a little mark if you delete some lines uh, so that you can see that you deleted there some, uh, some part of the file. So uh, this, uh, this is quite nice. It gives you uh, an idea. And now I'm going to save the file. Uh, when I save the file, I have it so that it runs Flake 8 and basically checks for errors. And then I get this fourth pane uh, at the bottom, uh, which shows uh, all, all, the, all the problems in the file. Uh, so here, okay, I have more, <laughs> more errors than, uh, than I expected. So this one is this. Uh, this one is downstream of that, so, so it's the same thing. And we have one more. Okay, I ha have an accept that doesn't have an, an exception clause. Uh, you probably notice that this synced to the new function that I'm here, uh, which is nice as well. So, uh, so this is it. Uh, it it's quite nice. Uh, this editor uh, knows about uh, Python indentation rules. So, so when I type Python, it follows the uh, the standard pepate uh, pepate uh, indentation. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, this is it. I have uh, a few plugins here that you will see in the config file. Uh, so there's the one that uh, that handles Python. Uh, there's one for uh, for Jinja templates uh, that that does uh, nice uh, syntax coloring on on Jinja, and uh, I have one for JavaScript, uh, which I, sometimes I, I I use as well. Uh, so anyway. This is it. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit this, and I'm going to I'm going to show you how you would install this config file uh, if if you had a new installation of Vim. So let's exit, and uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset my installation. So uh, I'm going to remove my Vim directory. So this is where all the plugins, all the uh, all the state for Vim is stored. So I'm going to get rid of it completely. And off it goes. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, I'm sorry. There, OK. Uh, so, so all of that is gone. Uh, so the, uh, the configuration is in the file called vim, uh, .vimrc in your home directory. So you will take this file from the link below and then uh, put it in your home directory. Uh, also name it .vimrc like, uh, like me. Uh, if you have a .vim directory, uh, you should probably delete it if you don't care or rename it in case you, you want to save it. But uh, the uh, the configuration file uh, is all uh, auto installing, so uh, probably not. It's better not to have any uh, any uh, leftovers from a previous use of Vim. So I'm going to start Vim, and and by the way, I I have an alias so that I can use Vi instead of Vim. But but this is this Vim, not not the older uh, Vi editor. So. When I started, now that I have my vimrc or .vimrc file in place, uh, it detects that it is, that this is a new installation, and then it downloads and installs all the plugins, uh, which are all of these. And then I press Enter, and then I'm thrown into the editor uh, with an empty file. Uh, so from here, I can uh, I can uh, enable the uh, the file browser with backslash n. And then I can enable the uh, the tag bar with backslash t, and these are on and off, so I can turn it on and off as needed. Uh, and here we are. Now now we are uh, ready to start working with this uh, with this editor. So uh, the config file, as I said, uh, is ready for you to use it. Uh, it's made for a recent version of Vim. 
uh, so probably a Vim uh, version 8, uh, which are the newer, the, the current one is 8.2. This is what I have here. And uh, the last thing that I can tell you, uh, you probably don't know how to exit Vim. A lot of people don't know how to exit Vim and find it very difficult uh, to figure out because you, you're here and there's actually no, <laughs> no indications of you know, how to exit. Uh, so I'm going to show you that. Uh, so this is lesson one in Vim, how to exit. Uh, so you need to make sure that you are in normal mode. So uh, sometimes if you're editing, you might be in insert mode. You know, uh, you, you know there, there are two or three different modes. So press escape and that will bring you back into normal mode. So escape and then colon to open the uh, the command uh, to, to, to bring the cursor back to the, uh, the command uh, line and then Q for quit. And if you want to exit without saving your changes. In, in this case, it doesn't matter because I, I don't have anything. But if you want to ignore changes, then uh, add an exclamation mark. So it's either colon Q or colon Q exclamation mark. And, and then that brings you back to the prompt. So there you go. Uh, I hope you find this useful. If you have uh, any specific questions about this, if, if you try it and you have questions, feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, if you have improvements, uh, new plugins that you like uh, that I'm not using, uh, also feel free to let me know. Thank you so much.